this uh, uh, amen. Praise the Lord here and everybody. Amen. amen. This is L. Anthony Earl Pollock, pastor of New Beginnings Church here in West Columbia, six, <coughs> excuse me, 617 12th Street. Here carrying on the work of the Lord. Amen. We started this work five years ago at New Beginnings Church because I felt in my heart, amen, amen, somebody need a new beginning. Somebody need a fresh start. Somebody need to know that they can start all over again. Because you see, some people have messed up so much in their life, and they feel that I just can't get no, I just can't get right. I can't do no more. I can't get better. They, they are gave up hope. But I want you to know on today, you can have a new beginning. The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Amen. We'd like to acknowledge all the members of New Beginnings Church. And I'm so glad for you out there today that, amen, that clicked on to hear a word from the Lord on today. Amen. I can do nothing, but with God, amen, all things are possible. possible. We'd like to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers of the land today. And I hope that your father is living. If he is not living, I encourage you, remember the good times that you had with your father. If your father is still here, amen, celebrate the father. Be a blessing unto him. Amen. So much has gone on back and forth down uh, the past, this year, in 2020. Amen. It ought, to make us, it ought to make our families draw closer together. Since we have not been able to go out and go places and visit places and do some of the things that we normally do, we ought to be drawing closer. Yes, sir. Amen. We yes, sir. ought to be drawing closer together instead of further apart. But I'm going to leave a, a, a brief word with you on today. Turn with me to Mark, the 14th chapter, amen, verse 12, excuse me, verse 32 to 36. And you don't have to flip there, because uh, I got three different passages there this morning. Mark, 14th chapter, verse 32 and 36. Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 14 and 15. And Galatians, the 4th chapter, 4 through 7 verse. Mark the 14th chapter, I'm going to say it again, Mark the 14th chapter, verse 32 and 36, Romans the 8th chapter, verses 14 and 15, Galatians the 4th chapter, 4 through 7 verse. Why are you turning to the rest of them? I'm going to begin reading at Mark the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 32. And it came to pass at a place named Gethsemane that he said to the disciples, sit ye here while I go pray. And he taken with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy and said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forth in us and fell on the ground and prayed Amen. That if it was possible that this hour in other words this suffering he was about to go through he prayed that it might pass from him. Yeah. The key verse, 36 verse, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thy will. Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14 reads as thus, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I come before you this morning. I ask God you to 
Look down upon us as we break the bread of life. Give us word, hallelujah, for your people, oh Lord, on today. I bind up the hand of the enemy and anybody that will try to hinder this word on today. We thank you right now. We praise you. We bless you. We honor you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. I'd like to leave a thought with you on today. Abba, Father. My Father is my dad. Yes, sir. Abba, Father. My Father is my dad. Mark, talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. As he was going to the garden, garden of Gethsemane, amen, right before he was led away to go to the cross of Calvary. And his Bible says he prayed an intimate prayer, amen, to God his Father, amen, to let this suffering pass from me. Take it away from me. I know it's going to be tough. But after he prayed, it got a little stronger. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the flesh of Jesus. Don't you know son of, as the son of God, he, he had all power. Amen. But the flesh did not want to feel the suffering. But he said, Abba, Father. And Apostle Paul, the greatest writer of the New Testament, in the book of Romans and in the book of Galatians, said the same thing. Abba, Father. My Father is my dad. Abba is a, a regular term. It is a, a father that has a close relationship with his children. And there are many fathers. But every father is not a dad. That daddy is something intimate about that daddy. Yes, sir. Amen? Yeah. Any man can become a father. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say this. It takes a man to be a dad. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah. I've heard stories pro and con about fathers during this time. Uh, but I got two personal little small, little short, very short stories. When I was working in the Columbia Highway Authority back in the 80s, and you know, there's a lot of single moms there, you know that. And I was work, walking down the street, getting ready to go to an apartment and do some work, and this little fella, little boy, about like three or four years old, came up to me and pulled on my pants leg. I said, what can I do for you, little man? He said, are you my daddy? That hurt me to my heart. Yeah, yeah. My wife has heard me tell that story many years. Yeah. And it still bothered me today that a little fella didn't know who his father was, yeah. much less a dad. Yeah. A daddy he can play with, a daddy that provide, amen, a daddy that secures and when he has confidence ain't gonna be there every day when he come home from school. Yes, sir. But the little fella said, are oh, you my dad? I said, what happened? What happened that somebody can father a child and have no relationship with that child? What has happened? Another story quickly, my daughter Joy, she was working at McDonald's when she was in high school. And she called one on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, and she said, she was crying. She said, Daddy, $50 is missing out of my cashier's draw, and they want to fire me. And she was upset. If y'all know my daughter Joy, she get upset. She's upset. And I said, I'm on my way. And I went to the store. And to make a long story short, we got things worked out, and she uh, and she continued to work there until she was ready to leave. But the words that comforted me, that encouraged my heart so much was when she said, she said, Daddy, when you said you was on the way, she said, I knew everything was going to be all right. Yeah. See, that's what a man supposed to do. Amen. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You have to stand strong sometimes. Yes, sir. Not to go out there and act ugly, amen, but go and stand for your rights, amen? Yeah. I could have been out there ugly and cussing and fussing, but I wanted to let them know what is the problem so we can work this thing out. I believe that manager had tears in his eyes by the time he got through talking to him. Not that I was fussing, but I wanted to get things straight because I know my daughter, amen, but I know you have had situations where you've had to stand for your son or for your daughter, yes. amen? You had to go there on their, on, on, on their behalf. You had to stand there. You had to stand in the gap. Amen. But thank God for your father. Happy Father's Day. But the message on the day is, Abba, Father, my father is my dad. And sometimes I'm going to switch between father and daddy. Because we said, like I said, there is a difference. Amen. We look unto the word of God and we see where Jesus said, Abba, Father. Apostle Paul said, 
Our but mean what? They had that close relationship with God our Father. If you don't have that close relationship with God, amen, find him, hallelujah, come to him, and you got to come to him through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And God, our Heavenly Father, has value in us. In the 10th chapter of Matthew, it talks about how God, our Heavenly Father, he cares so much for us, he knows the hairs on our head, everyone. He also used the illustration that are not two sparrows, two little birds, sold for one penny? And that's pretty cheap. Not even worth a whole penny by itself, but two sparrows, two little birds, are worth one penny. And the Bible said, if one sparrow falls to the ground, our Heavenly Father know about that sparrow. So how much will he take care, amen, yes, of you and I? Yes, sir. He knows you right now. All this that's going on in society right now, let me tell you something. Hear me good. None of this has caught God by surprise. No, no. Hallelujah. Amen. It did not catch him by surprise, this pandemic. Amen. All the unrest that's going on in our country, this did not catch God by surprise. But it has surprised some, some of us. It has shocked some of us. Hallelujah. But I want you to know in the word of God that in the last days, these things are going to come to pass. Amen. The Bible says that the love of many will wax cold. Hallelujah. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be pestilence in land in these last days. There's but woe to the one that won't take heed to the warning that is coming up on the land. If you see the warning, hallelujah, take heed before the event take place. Yes. But God has value in us. He knows each and every one of us by our name. Yes. I looked online one time. My name is Anthony Pollock. And I saw four or five Anthony Pollock. I saw a little fellow. Little young girl came and got playing basketball and won a basketball game. And I said, my goodness, that Anthony Paul, I do pretty good. Kind of like me. Amen. But he know me by my name. He know my individual self. God knows. And I thought about a song. I had a song last year that said that he thought I was worth saving. Mm -hmm. You was worth saving. Amen. You was worth God sending his son Jesus Christ for. Hallelujah. Yes. To yes. shed his blood. To take no beating, to take that interrogation. Amen. He thought you was worthy. Mm -hmm. When something's worthy, that means you have found worth in it. When something has value, you know that the, 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 the worth of this thing, amen, is worth purchasing. It is worth keeping. Amen. Now, when I start talking about value, I thought about something. Some things I value, and some things I don't value as much. I had an old, old car, my wife and I, we first got married, we had a 70 Buick Regal. I like that car, I love that car. But as it got older, I didn't value it as much because I knew I needed to get another one eventually. So the value I had for that car at first was not the same five years later. But I'm so glad about that car, hallelujah. That same value you had when I, hallelujah. God said, he still have that value in me. But I'm surprised you. God had value before you got saved. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. Amen. Abba, Father. Hallelujah. My Father is my daddy. Thank God for Jesus on the day. And because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world, we have life now. You say, well, we're going to have uh, the good life when we get to heaven. He said, Jesus, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly win. Right now, if you walk in the blessings of God, my God, the Bible says, the blessing of God will come upon you and it will even overtake you. That's what the Bible says, amen? He said, now, I'll be the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. Some people say that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I was a son saved by grace. Now I'm a son of God. My wife is a daughter, amen, of the Most High God. Uh uh, I ain't living like that. I know some people have said that down through the years. Well, I, I'm saved, but I'm still a sinner saved by grace. You can say that all you want. I'm not going to say that. Why? Because I've been born again, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. 
The places that I used to go, I don't go no more. There's been a change in my life, and there's supposed to be a change in your life when God has come into your life. Because he's a good father, he had mercy upon you. Yes. He nurtured you. He shielded you, protected you when you couldn't keep yourself. Sometimes as a father, and you that have sons and daughters, you have seen them coming up. And sometimes you have seen them going in a, in a direction, amen, that was against what you have taught them. And you have told them and told them, but at some point, you take your hands off them and say, all right, you got to learn this lesson all by yourself. And, that, and that's what God do to us sometimes. God has here led us and guides by the Holy Ghost to lead us into the truth of God, to lead us in the word. But when we continue to refuse to obey, God takes his hand off and says, okay. And God said, let's see. What are they going to learn? How many times are you going to keep hitting your head side the wall? Think about the children of Israel. A 40 day journey to the promised land. The Bible said they kept going around in the circle. Instead of a 40 day journey, it was 40 years. But thank God, hallelujah. God's a good father. He still fed them with manna from heaven. He still gave them water. He even gave them meat when he caused a bird to fly right amongst the camp. Then he had to go out running and looking for me. God provided for them in the wilderness. Amen. What a good father we Hallelujah. have. Yeah. I'm a father. Yes, Jesus. My father is my dad. Yeah. As I said, that's an intimate title. What do you say? My question is, do you know him? Do you know him as a heavenly father, as your dad? Yes, sir. Do you know him enough that you can call on him? Don't you know when you got an intimate relationship with God, you can call on him in the midnight hour. Mm -hmm. You can call him early in the morning. Hallelujah. Sometimes I had to call God early in the morning. Hallelujah. Sometimes I've had to call him late at night. Hallelujah. Sometimes I had to call, oh my, I've had to call him when I'm laying in bed with my wife beside me. Hallelujah. She don't know. She may be sleep. She may be resting. But I'm talking to God, my father. Hallelujah. Let him know how I feel. And I thank God for his love and his kindness. You know, the Bible says God is going to wipe all tears from your eyes. He got a place for you where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, for the former things are going to be passed away. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day. Hallelujah. Father, Father, my Father is my dad. And a good father, he loves, but a good father also disciplines. A good father also shows tough love. Amen. Now, we know there's Mother's Day. We just celebrated Mother's Day last month. And Mother's Day, uh, they seem to be a little more patient than the fathers. But the fathers have to be a man. Be a man. Be a strong man. Be a courageous man. Be a dependable man. Hallelujah. The church of Israel, God was getting them ready. And I believe during the time of Abraham, he was building them up, making them a great nation. He told Abraham to go out to a country that I'll show you. And there came a time, wickedness began to come upon a man. He said, Abraham, go out and find me a man. But I'm going to destroy this city. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Abraham said, oh, what if I find 50 righteous? We just spare the city. Hallelujah. God. He said, if you find 50 righteous, I'll spare the city. What if I can only find 40? We just spare the city. God is looking for some men that's going to serve him. Hallelujah. Men, it is on our shoulders. As the, as the man goes, so do the family. As the family goes, so do the church. As the church goes, so do the world. Hallelujah. But if the man has, has not taken care of his responsibilities, amen, the structure is going to begin to crumble. And we see it on today. We see it all around. Now I got my little pick with these programs on television. How many of you have seen? They have pushed the men in the background so much that it makes it seem like the husband or the man in the house is the most ignorant, dumbest person in the house don't know how to do nothing. I am sick and tired of pushing men into a position like that. You see them 
I hope I ain't offending you, but I'm just telling you how it is. They got so many commercials in there. The woman is stepping over the man like he's a weeping. A man needs to be a man. A man needs to be strong. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And I ain't biting my tongue to say it. We need strong men. Hallelujah. Women need strong husbands. Children need strong fathers. In the name of Jesus, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Men, take your right place and stand up and be the man. Pay your bill. Go to work. Hallelujah. Represent your family. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let the children go out of the house with bragging. Go tell them, fix yourself up when you leave out. When my children leave out of the house, I don't care if they are uh, 38 years old. I tell them, hey, you represent me when you walk out that door. Yes, sir. What about our Heavenly Father? Yes, we sir. represent God yes, when we walk out that door. Represent like you're supposed to. Yes, Hallelujah. Have some gumption about yourself. Yes, Have some grit about yourself. Yes, I know sometimes it get hard. I know sometimes you are tired. But sometimes you got to tighten your belt. Hallelujah. Tighten your belt and be the man that you are supposed to be. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My father. Yes, sir. Here's my daddy. Mm -hmm. Be strong, my brothers. I don't care if you black, white, Hispanic, Asian. The families is counting on us. Yes, sir. To be me. Yes, sir. To be strong men. And yes, it's a it's an uphill battle someday. But you you can do it. You can make it. I think about my father, the late Bishop Malcolm Pollock. Amen. He's been, I think, about two, almost 20 years now he's been passed. But I think about this, just this. Even though he has been passed almost, almost 20 years ago, his name, his legacy, is still talked about today. Yes, sir. In a good way. Yes, sir. How he was a man that stood for right. Mm -hmm. He was a man that loved his wife and he loved his children. Mm -hmm. And he would fight for his family. He would fight for his church. Hallelujah. That's a good man. Yes, yes sir. Man. And that was imparted unto me to be the man. Like my father, like my heavenly father. Amen. Yes, I made mistakes. We all have. Yes, sir. But we learn from them yes. and we go from them. Oh. Amen. Yes, you made mistakes. Hear me good. God forgive you. Ask for forgiveness. It takes a man to humble down and say, I'm sorry. It takes a man to say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Even on our job, if a person try to slip and slide and deceive that they didn't make a mistake, that'll get you in more trouble. They say, I made a mistake, but I'm going to get it right. Amen. Be real. Amen. Stand up, my brothers, my brothers in Christ. Stand up. Be that example. Not only do we have to live for God, but we have to be an example. Amen? We have to be an example for who? For the young men that's in the neighborhood. For the young men on our job. For the young men going up and down the street, the highways of life. One of the best, I'm going to close with this, one of the best compliments I ever got in my life. A relative of mine, he was a little fellow. I've been married a number of years. He pulled me to the side. A little fellow, he was little. He was a big fellow man. He was little. He said, Uncle Earl, I said, yeah. He said, when I get married, I want to treat my wife like you treat us brother. Man, what you talking about? I feel chin for the tongue. Yes, sir. See, we don't think these little people are watching us. Yes, sir. But these little people are watching us. Yes. That's why it is important to set an example, mm -hmm. to live the life, to be an example. Yes, sir. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get to know him. Yes. We live in some strange times with we we well, want you to do church. Pray for your pastors. I know the church is praying for me. Pray for your pastor. Pray for other pastors there. Because some things we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Pray for them in Jesus' name. As I get ready to close, I pray a blessing upon the fathers. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I pray for every father that they will recognize that they need your help. We are not lone rangers. We don't isolate ourselves. We need help from one another, yes. and most of all from you, dear God. Yes. Help us to be strong men, Lord. Help us to be holy men, righteous men, to do that which is right in your sight. Oh God, that our attitude would be a positive attitude, that I am a father, and I'm gonna take care of my responsibilities. Oh, bless us right now, Lord, and we'll find ourselves doing your will. I love you, God. Help me, strengthen me where, where we are weak, 
Build us up where we have been torn down. Help us to show love where we want to show hate. Help us to love what you love. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Have a great day. Happy Father's Day to you all. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.